There we go. All right, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about a tactic that I would consider to be one of the absolute most deadly secret weapons that every walleye angler should have in their arsenal. And a lot of them don't, unfortunately. This is not a giant here. But the rig that we are using is a drop shot rig. And this is a tactic that I've been using for a really long time. Back when I was a bass fishing obsessed, you know, young teenage kid, uh, drop shotting was one of my go-tos. Not a giant here, but this is a straight up walleye catching tactic. And in this video, I'm gonna share a bunch of tips. We're gonna go totally from A to Z on everything you need to know to drop shot for walleyes. So buckle up, we got some good information coming. Ooh, there's one. Give it just a second. Ooh. Set the hook into them. You don't have to drill them that hard. Realistically, you got a super fine wire hook and we can get into the componentry right now. Actually, the only reason why I set this one as hard as I did is I thought it was a pretty decent fish. It felt pretty good and it is pretty good. I don't have a net today, so I'm gonna be going down to grab this guy. Pretty solid fish. Ooh. There we go. Not bad. Pretty good walleye right there. That one smoked it. We're sitting right now in about 30 feet of water. But what I love about this presentation is the fact that it's just incredibly versatile. So you can fish it out here in 30, you can fish it in, you can fish it in 40, you can fish it in 10 feet of water, six feet of water. And the different depths that you fish it at, the main thing that you're changing will be the weight. So right here, I have a 3 8 ounce weight. And what I like about the 3 8 ounce is the fact that it's really versatile. So right now we're in 30. I feel like it falls fast enough to get down to the fish. Um, but if I was fishing up in 15 feet of water, I could still run this. Uh, that being said, um, you know, if I am, if I know I'm gonna be consistently fish, fishing in shallower water, I will downsize to a quarter ounce. Those are kind of like the two weight classes that I have in my box. The reason that I'm using tungsten is ultimately the fact that there's not gonna be any snags anywhere on where I'm fishing right now. So I can afford to use something a little bit pricier that gives me a little bit more sensitivity. Um, but if I'm fishing around rocks or somewhere where I know there's a ton of snags, I will use lead, I'll use the cheap stuff. That last fish right there came on a night crawler and it's pretty simple. You just kind of thread it on there. So it's coming out the back and actually I'll probably get you some close up B-roll you can look at right now to see what your bait is supposed to look like. Uh, but the biggest key is having a hook that has a good bait keeper and specifically a bait keeper that works really good um, with night crawlers specifically if that's what you're using. Um, and this one right here I believe is the Gamagatsu G Finesse. And this is a number one hook. I would also argue that you could go smaller. I don't think that they might not make this particular hook in a smaller size. Um, but I think this is totally fine. Sometimes I actually prefer hooks that are a little bit bigger just purely for the fact that um, if you if you know you're gonna be catching bigger fish, um, it pays to have a bigger hook with a little bit better gap. I would argue anywhere in that like number one, number two for size. Um, and then if you're using leeches, which is another option, I got some leeches right here. Typically I'll actually go with more of like a live bait type hook. Uh, so yeah, I can show you some B-roll right now what that's supposed to look like as well. So those are kind of the two hook styles I'll use when I'm drop shotting. I can actually use both styles of hooks when I'm using a plastic as well. And sometimes plastics can be really effective just because you know you can really fish a lot and catch a lot of fish with them. From there, I'm actually gonna sit down so I'm not leaning down and looking at the camera. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about just the rest of the setup here, just so you know exactly how you need to get rigged up if you want to do this particular tactic. All right, so we talked about the weight and the hook. And so now let's kind of like run through the rest of the setup top to bottom. So when it comes to line, line is very important. And there's a few different schools of thought when it comes to line. Uh, some guys like to run straight fluorocarbon all throughout the entire setup. 
Um, and that's not something that I personally typically like to do. Uh, what I like to do is I will run braided mainline. So this right here is eight pound braid and then I will run a big long fluorocarbon leader. So this on this one right here, I got like about a 10 foot leader. Um, and on this rig right here, I have six pound. And I have never really felt the need to go lower than that. I think you definitely could. You could go down to five pound if you wanted. Uh, four pound might be a little aggressive, but might be necessary on some ultra clear bodies of water. Um, and then sometimes I've found it somewhat useful going uh, up to eight pound and when I'd like to go up to eight pound is just when I'm fishing around weeds and I, when I hook a fish I want to make sure it doesn't run into the weeds I want to have a little bit more power um, to hold it off but that is sort of a quick rundown on the line one thing that's also really important is the fact that when you're putting this hook on you 100% have to use a Palomar knot and I can run through that later if you guys want um, actually, I'm going to plan on doing that. I'll put that later in the video and you can actually check the description. I'll put timestamps of where I put everything um, as far as that goes. But you'd absolutely have to use a Palomar knot to put this hook on because the thing about the Palomar knot is it has a big long tag end underneath. Um, so you need to tie that knot and you kind of have to plan ahead how long that tang tag end needs to be because you need to have enough for a dropper at the bottom. So. Once that knot is tied, you take the end of the line and you put it back through the hole. And what that does, the whole uh, the line tie of the hook, what that does is makes it so, you know, if the essentially if your line is not tight, your hook is just kind of going to hang like that. But once this weight hits the bottom, it straightens up the hook. So the hook is always in perfect position to hook the fish. Kind of another important part of the whole setup here is the rod and the reel. And uh, kind of the only important thing to me about the reel is the fact that it has a really good drag. This is a finesse situation. We're using light line. We're using a little bit smaller hooks. Um, and so you need something with a good drag. And I also typically like to use like roughly a 2000 size reel for this presentation. Uh, some people like to go with smaller reels like 1000. I think that's totally fine, totally serviceable. Um, but the reason why I go with something a little bit bigger, a little bit faster is just the fact that if I'm fishing in deep water and I'm casting, I'll toss it out. You know, I might see, I might see a school of fish in my electronics. I'll toss the bait out there. And if I don't get bit right away, I'm just pretty much going to crank that thing back in and make another cast. So I could also make the argument that you could use a 3000 size reel, um, but 2000 seems to be that happy medium for me. And then for the rod itself, I like to use a medium light rod. And I think medium light is pretty darn key um, because this is a finesse presentation. And when you set the hook, you don't necessarily want to jack the fish because you're using a really thin wire hook. And the thin wire is kind of necessary for the bait that you're using. Um, but what that means is that essentially what you're going to do is when you feel a bite, you're kind of going to drop the rod tip a little bit, confirm that they're munching on it. Because usually like if you're using a night crawler and you set the hook as soon as you feel something, you're just going to rip the back half of that night crawler out. Um, so I like to kind of drop the rod a little bit, make sure they're munching it, and then I just kind of like reel into them and set the hook sort of at the same time. So there's not a big issue of kind of reeling up the slack line like you might have with traditional live bait rigging. Um, so you kind of have a more straight connection to the fish more often than not with yeah, this presentation. Here. The old droppy droppy. 
typically I'm going to be using just like a fast action, not an extra fast, but just a normal fast action. And the reason why I like that is just for casting accuracy. Um, and then if it's too fast, I don't think you get as good of a sweeping hook set. So that's sort of a quick rundown um, on the rod and the reel. And then one other little thing I will mention here is I like to put a little, this is like a hair tie, essentially, like something gals might use to put in a ponytail or whatever. Um, and the hard part when you're putting this whole setup away is you'll put the hook on the hook keeper right there, and then you have this thing dangling all over the place, getting tangled in everything. Um, so what I like to do is I like to just wrap it around a couple times, and then I will tuck that little drop shot weight right there in the hair tie. So that way you don't have a big giant mess. This is a, a little trick that guys have been using for a long time. So that's kind of a not so quick rundown of everything I've got going here. And I will also put everything um, specifically that I'm using in this whole setup. Um, I will put it down in the description below. So if you weren't taking notes um, and you wanted to get just kind of like the correct stuff for this presentation, you can just go down there. It's a quick, easy way to reference it. That'll be down in the description of this video. So what I'm doing to work this bait, just letting it drop down to the bottom. You'll know pretty quick when it hits the bottom. Then I'm just kind of shaking it. And I'm not like popping the whole system. I'm more letting the weight on the bottom, just sit on the bottom, sit in place. And I'm kind of just shaking and popping that bait a little bit without moving the actual drop shot weight itself. And then I'll pick it up and I'll drag it a few feet. Then I'll let it kind of settle back down again. And I'll work that bait in place. And more often than not, what I'm doing, one thing that's sort of a misconception um, is a lot of people think that drop shots are just like, oh, there's fish underneath the boat, drop the weight down. And that's like kind of the traditional use for drop shot fishing is vertical fishing. Um, but I'm finding that like 97% of the time I'm casting that bait away from the boat, um, especially on these lakes that are clearer um, and these clear bodies of water like you can't get that close to these fish before they get all spooky um, you can see that on live sonar i think guys have known that for a long time before live sonar has been a thing um, but like what i'll see is like you'll see these fish and they might be you know four or five feet up off the bottom which is just perfect that's exactly what you're looking for um, but if you get too close to them they'll kind of they'll either kind of go down to bottom and when they're going down to bottom that's not usually a good sign that means they're kind of hunkering down because you're driving over them um, or they'll just start swimming away from you is another thing that these fish will do too so oftentimes making casts out to the fish i like to pitch you know anywhere from 50 60 70 feet away from the boat um, and then just kind of working the bait back towards you and that's also kind of interesting uh, thing because like there's the misconception that drop shotting is just below the boat and because of that, guys for the longest time have used like really short rods, like six and a half foot rods, six foot rods. Um, but for me, I like to use more traditional walleye gear uh, when it comes to drop shot fishing. And that's with kind of right around a seven foot rod for me. And I don't need like a big long rod to make long casts because this thing casts like a mile. That's one of the benefits of this whole setup is if you're fishing in the wind, it's almost like the wind doesn't even matter. You can cast right into wind, you can cast crosswind if you need to, whatever. Um, so I don't need a long rod for casting a ways, but I'd like to have a long, a uh, little bit of a longer rod um, anytime that I'm doing a sweeping hook set. So once again, another uh, benefit of using these baits is the fact that drop shots, you lose very, very few fish because there's not a lot the fish can do. Once it has a hook in its mouth, uh, it doesn't have a big bait, it can shake out or anything like that. It's just a little hook um, and the dropper weight itself is separate. So essentially that doesn't give the fish any leverage. Um, so that being said, you know, I like to have a little bit of a longer, softer rod just because when I'm using really finesse presentation like this, um, I don't want to horse the fish too much and I have lighter lines, so I want to have a little bit more length and give to that rod when I'm fighting a fish, just to make sure my entire system stays intact. 
All right, so the next big question is gonna be when and where should you bust out the drop shot rig? And we're gonna keep this section really short because ultimately the answer is most of the time it's applicable. Um, so for me where the drop shot really shines is in summer, um, but that being said, if you wanted to start using it kind of in that late spring, early summer period, you could definitely bust it out then. And then it's especially good in the middle of summer um, when it gets really difficult to catch walleyes on you know, just about anything. Um, it's a really good dog days of summer tactic. So pretty much all season throughout the summer, uh, late spring, early fall, that's when I'm personally using it. Um, and then as far as like where am I fishing it, typically I'm fishing it just about anywhere and that's what's cool about it um, it's really good if you're using forward facing sonar and making target casts at you know specific fish um, but it's also super good for fishing in edges because you can be really precise with it if you know that you're exactly 40 feet from the weed edge you can pitch it directly on the weed edge and it actually does a really good job of working its way through weeds so it's a great tactic for weed walleye um, just kind of pitching around the edges and kind of into it a little bit. Um, it can be good for rocks. It can get snagged up in rocks as well. That's when you're going to bust out the lead instead of the tungsten. But then, yeah, as far as, you know, fishing in deep water, it can be more efficient than rigging, um, especially if you have to have a long leader when you're rigging. The drop shot is a lot more precise. It's easier to keep it directly in the zone. Obviously you can cast it a lot better um, or you can just drag it underneath the boat. So it's kind of a uh, works everywhere type of tactic. So I like to always have one tied on um, this time of year. There we go. Well, we've got us on a little school of these guys right now. So I think I may move around a little bit and find the big ones. But, and if you're looking for little cleaners, that would be a good fish. That is one thing that's interesting about these drop shot, this drop shot tactic is, it seems like it's pretty stinking good at catching fish, almost no matter what the size is. Um, typically, like if you're looking for some of those under eater size fish, uh, the drop shot is like very, very difficult to beat. Um, and then sometimes like it doesn't seem like you get as many big fish. Of course you do get some big fish, um, but truth of the matter is typically this is more of a numbers tactic than just about anything else. All right, I got my night crawler right here. Got my drop shot hook. I'm gonna go over to this close-up camera right here and try and get you some good footage, kind of teaching you how to rig this for drop shot fishing. So basically you take the crawler, you poke the hook right into the end of it. And then you just kind of work, work that crawler up the hook till it gets to about just around the turn there, uh, right about there. Then I like to poke the hook out and I'll take the body of the night crawler and I'll just kind of work it up the hook so it gets to the bait keeper and that'll hold the crawler on. So there you have it. You have a night crawler on a hook, but now what I like to do is this big long profile right here is gonna be a little bit long when it comes to uh, this application just because you end up with a lot of short strikes when it's this long um, so one thing I like to do is just pinch it right here and you'll have a way better hookup ratio and in addition to that you're also gonna have um, a lot less fouling that's one thing that will happen a lot is basically this crawler will end up falling up so uh, shortening it up will help with that a lot all right, next up, I'm going to show you how to rig up plastics. Uh, I got some eye candy jig crawlers right here, which is one of my favorites, one of my go-tos. Um, super awesome, stretchy material, holds scent really, really well, which for me is critical for walleyes. So I'm going to take the hook here. I have the straight shank hook, uh, same one I use for crawlers, and I'm going to show you on the camera on the side here. It's really simple. All I do 
is I take the bait, stick it in to the end here, just super traditional, uh, traditional rigging. And I poke it through and I run it right about to there. You can actually kind of line up um, before you start rigging, you can actually line up um, on the plastic where the hook is supposed to pop out. But I've done this enough, I kind of have a good idea. And then pull the plastic down and there you have it. Simple drop shot rig. Perfect for catching a bunch of walleyes, really great. One thing that's awesome about plastics is when you are on a pretty good bite, um, and every once in a while, you know, walleyes can be stinkers, but every once in a while, you'll run into a good bite. Um, when you have a good bite, having a plastic is just way more efficient. You don't have to deal with, you know, rigging up more leeches or night crawlers. And uh, sometimes, especially if you're not experienced, um, rigging up night crawlers can take a while. Um, so to have a plastic that you can just use over and over again, um, is super key when the bite is good. It's also really good when you're targeting bigger fish. I don't know why, uh, but it seems like bigger walleyes really like plastics. Um, so if I'm targeting a kicker, sometimes I'll switch to plastics even if the bite is a little bit tougher. Another go-to live bait option when I'm drop shotting is a leech. And when I'm using a leech, I'll do a little bit of a different hook if I'm planning on using leeches. Sometimes I'll just have the sh uh, long shank hook just rig uh, rigged up and ready to go and whatever I wanna use, I'll just put it on there. But if I know I'm gonna be using leeches, um, this is the hook that I like to use. And I'm gonna show you in this camera over here. All I like to do is take the hook and poke it just underneath that little sucker and that's it. Basically what I got right here is just a little octopus hook. And for me, this is perfect and ideal um, for leeches just because there's less hardware there for the walleye to look at um, and you're not threading the leech on there. So you don't necessarily need to have that longer shank. Um, so this is a really good option. Now, if you do happen to have this hook tied onto your rod um, and you want to switch to plastics, uh, it's really simple. All you got to do is take the hook stick it underneath the bottom of the plastic and then poke it out the top. Um, this is just called nose hooking a really, really popular way to hook baits for drop shot fishing. And this is the way I used to hook all my plastics when I was younger, when I was bass fishing all the time. Um, but yeah, this is a really efficient way to do it and super easy. All right, next up, I'm going to teach you how to tie the Palmar knot. It's a super easy knot and it is 100% required if you want to drop shot. Um, so I'm going to go over to this camera over here, do the best I can to illustrate it. Um, there are more videos on YouTube. It's super common knot. Um, so if you want to find something that's a little bit easier to see, look for ones with the big thick ropes where they teach you how to do it. But I'm going to do the best I can right here. Um, it's pretty simple. So basically you take uh, the line and you stick it through the hole and then you pull a little bit of it out and then you stick it back through the hole the way it came. And then you pull that right there. So on this side, we have the main line and the tag end. On this side, we have a big loop. And all you do is you take this and you tie it in an overhand knot. Just a simple overhand knot like that. Um, and then next thing you do is you take this big loop right here and you stick the hook through it. And then just like that, you have the makings of a good knot. The only thing I gotta do right now before I pull this tight um, is I gotta moisten this knot so that there's not friction, um, which could damage the fluorocarbon. So moisten it right there and then I take it and all I do is I pull on the main line and the tag end right here. And there you have it. The next thing you got to do too, um, is you got to take this tag end and you got to stick it down through the top of the line tie right here. So this is going to be your drop shot dropper. Pull it down through there, pull that knot through and there you have it. Super simple. You got the drop shot rig. Um, and if you need some more help, there's a lot of videos on YouTube um, with channels that specifically 
only have like knot tying instructionals and they have big ropes where it's easy to see. So with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to do this knot in, you know, about 15, 20 seconds flat. It's sort of going to depend on the situation and the mood of the fish and how high they're riding up off the bottom. And if I'm fishing around rocks or I'm fishing in weeds, like if I'm fishing in weeds, I'll have it quite a bit longer. I like to go, you know, two, two and a half feet. Um, but when I'm just fishing good clean area like I'm fishing today, I will tend to go a little bit shorter. Could be anywhere from 12 inches to, this is about 18 inches right here. I think 18 is kind of my all around uh, length, kind of what I like to use in a bunch of different situations, but sort of that one to two foot range is typically how long you want this to be. That's about all the info that I got for you for drop shot fishing for walleye, but if you're looking for some more walleye content, check out this video right here that is my top five biggest mistakes that I see walleye anglers make during the summer period that's preventing them from catching more fish. So check out this video right here. I know you're going to get a bunch of really good information.